I certainly want to thank you for watching the videos that you have, and this is the last in the series of them. So this one will take you all the way here to the very end of what you are seeing now. I apologize for the stitchiness of the program and will uh, have that fixed in the future. I promise you that all the new videos will be about 20 minutes long and will be as comprehensive as possible. It is a very difficult task to um, make these videos short because <laughs> there's so much information that's involved. I really hope that you enjoy this video and uh, hey if you have any questions please leave them in the comments or you have some issues leave those in the comments and I'll address them as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy this new video. I am looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Brackets that I was talking about that just tells me that the distances are the same between them. So now what I can do is I can take all six of these boxes and I can shrink them a little bit. I can go like, whoa, okay, now I want them to fit. And I'm going to center them. So by going back and forth, I am centering them. Now, these are actually going to be category buttons and this name is going to be wrong because what I need to do is I need to have this as a menu page for register one. So I'm going to manage layouts. I'm on this layout so I can click it and I can edit it. And when I edit it, it's going to ask me, what do you want to do with this page? Well, I want to change the name. So I'm going to change it to menu and then I'm going to select one. I'm going to say menu one. <coughs> now, if this was going to be a category menu, then I would have this category menu one. But for all practical purposes and what we're actually building here, we're going to limit the amount of products that we're selling to a single page. And obviously I want to show records from the menu. I don't want to show, show records from anything else, just from the menu. And it doesn't really matter if I delineate the fields on the current record. So I'm going to undo that. It says save record changes automatically. That's good because if we were to make changes, I want to be able to do that. So here we are now on menu one and it automatically saves it. So all I really have to do is just close out of that and I can grab all of these and I can hold the control button and I can drag them down a little bit. And then I can hold the control button again and I can drag them down a little bit. And so now I have all of these wonderful fields and I want to grab them all. And you can select a box just by touching it, just by a small, it will grab the whole box, which is really cool. So you don't have to have it all. So you can grab it like that. And now I'm going to lower it a little bit so it's more centered in this field. Obviously I like it better to be at the top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start utilizing these by clicking on them twice. So whatever name that you have that you want to use for this, um, you can do so. Uh, but remember, this is a small cafe. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, um, we'll say hot dog. And we'll click on this. And we'll say this is a chili dog, and it, it's okay. We're we're gonna change the um, the font size so that it it all fits in here. And this one we are going to call a Philly dog, and you can leave them just like that if you want to. You don't have to change the um, the font and reduce the size if you do, if you don't want to and this one I'm you know what, I'm just not even going to use this one I'm not going to use this one I'm gonna I'm gonna leave these blank so that in the future should I need to I can have like if I want to add something to this hot dog I want to add uh, uh, onions or something I can I can put the word onions in here and the cool thing is I can select all of these and so 
if I wanted to, I can select all these. And, and as I showed you before, you can change, go to the Appearance tab, you can change exactly what happens to these buttons. So if I wanted to create a solid color button, I could just create a solid color button. And then I could pick the color. I pick a blue color. And now they are a separator. And obviously they will do absolutely nothing. So uh, I'm going to kind of get rid of that for now. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say um, this one is a soda pop. And this one is an iced tea. And this one is a juice. And in the center, because remember we were just doing uh, chips and soda with hot dogs. And so these three, I can have to, I can select them. And erase whatever's in them. And I can grab a hold of them and change them to a solid color and pick a solid color. But that is the wrong one. I wanted one more. There we go. <clears throat> and then close it out. So those would basically just be separators if that's what I wanted to do. And it, of course I could... And so I can always change these back should I want to. Uh, but like I said, we we're just doing the the chips section. So let's have these uh, chips. Let's make this one uh, fries. Let's make this one. Uh, let's see. What what's the difference? Chips and fries. <laughs> I can't think of anything else that you would want to actually have. We'll call that uh, coleslaw. We'll have this one soup. This one would be a salad, if I can learn how to spell. And this one will be um, Oh, heck, I don't know. It could be anything from rice to bread, uh, you name it. Um, let's just, uh, let's just for now, we'll just call it rice. Um, you know, the names are really don't matter. So now what we need to do is let's go up here where you see this and let's go to the launch page. And now what I want to do is I want to double click this button and I want to click on this and and then it'll say do you want to do a single step or do you want to perform a script well I just want to do a single step and now it's going to ask me what do I want to do and here's all of these neat uh, controls that you can do things that you can that you can actually create myself I just type in the word go because I want it to go somewhere and I want it to go to a specific layout well, there's only a couple of layouts, so not the original layout, but a layout. And it's going to say, well, which one do you want to go to? Well, I want to go to this one, the, the menu one, uh, one, and so we'll call that good. And we have to press the OK. And now it will go there. So you could add um, something that we could do is you could take this button, you could grab a hold of it, and then control C or simply copy and then if we exit this layout and here it is it's, it's our little system is just beautiful and we, we go over it see how it just changed that well the thing is it didn't change it to hand cursor so I what I want to do is I want to double click it I want to go into options and change cursor to hand over button so now when I exit the layout and I come over it, see how it changes it to a hand? The other one's doing nothing, nothing else is working, but that one is working. And if I click on it, 
it just took me to my first page. Voila, I've just made the largest grab that there is. So now what I want to do is I want to finish this page. So what I'm going to do with this is I want to click anywhere on the screen and then I got to edit layout. <laughs> That's why. Paste. Okay, so from this, of course, I could put this button absolutely anywhere that I want to. I'm going to just drag it up here. And I think I'll, I think I'll just set it right there. But I'm going to double click it because I don't really want it to be an admin bunny or an admin admin button. But I want it to be a launch page. So what the launch page will do is it will take me back to the launch page. Um, and if I double click it and I tell it to do a single step, it will ask me what do I want to do. I want to go to layout and I want to select the layout and go back to the launch page and press OK. And now whenever I press that button, it will take me back to that original page. Some of the other things that we will uh, be doing here in just a second is we will be doing the security boxes and the security portals and some of the other more interesting features that we want to uh, create. So if we wanted to um, we could go into field picker and it would give us a list of fields so we can have a quantity window or an identifier um, or the security box well in this particular case we want to install the quantity window and we want to um, just drag it out here on the field and then it, see how it, it gave us a thing it gave us a label we didn't really want a label so we probably should have selected no label but that's okay we'll go ahead and close it out and we'll click on the quantity window and we will zero it now if we click on this we can create a much larger unit and what we're going to do is we're going to create it at 36. And the reason why is because, remember, this is going on a touch system. So we want to make sure that we're doing this correctly or that we're doing this uh, to work. So I'm going to go ahead and move these down a little bit because I really don't want, I don't want anything to be in the way of this quantity window. I don't want someone to accidentally... Um, anyone to accidentally mess with that window and what it is is if you go to if you exit the layout you'll see the quantity window here and you can click on it no records are present to create a new record uh, choose the new record so you would select new record and now it, it becomes available to you. But that's probably the only time you will ever have to do that. So if we go to Exit Layout and we go to um, Layouts and we set the tab order, it's going to say, look at all these tabs. Well, we don't want tabs on anything in here because we don't, we don't want when you touch something for it to go somewhere else after the fact. So. We're just going to zero that out. And of course we have just now the reminder to tell us that something is incorrect in the system. You'll get a lot of those at first because you're still developing the system. You're still bringing it up and you're trying to create the system. <clears throat> and as long as it is not complete, the system will not understand that. So what this window is actually for is it will um, if you put a quantity in there and then you push hot dog so if if I were uh, now it's not going to show me this um, so one thing I'm gonna click on it I'm gonna put it dead in the center I'm gonna center it because I, I like the centering part more than anything else but 
So if I go to layout and I and I click on it, uh, here it's not going to do anything because I'm on my my computer system. But if I was if I was to do this in a or on a tablet, what would happen was a little window would open up and it would it would ask me you know what what information do you want to put in there? And because it is a numbers box, if you remember when we were making the field, we we selected number. It will bring up like a 10 key. And so, therefore, you can put in whatever number that you want to. So uh, when you click on it, you would put in a number, and then you would press hot dog. So if you were selling 10 hot dogs, you would click on it. You would select 10. You would type in 10 and then uh, push the hot dog button. And that would sell 10 hot dogs all in one time. So it, it makes it a whole lot easier if you're selling a lot of a single item. If you're not, you're just selling one at a time of any given thing, then it's not necessary to actually have this box. And you can hide it. If, if you don't like the box being there, you can hide it or you can delete it, whichever makes sense to you. Now we are going to, for the sake of this particular system, we're going to just leave this exactly the way it is. This These buttons can be absolutely anything. If you want to uh, edit layout. If you wanted to say, you know, I want these to be, um, I actually want these to be gradients because I'm I'm kind of anal about that. <laughs> I like everything to look good, so you just select gradient. But um, if if you wanted to sell un, uh, nuts and bolts and you wanted to sell. Um, fly paper or whatever whatever it is that you wanted to put on these you do that in my system this very first page is it's all category pages so you would have adapters and sunglasses and e-liquids and uh, mech mods and tech mods and you know whatever it is and they're all alphabetically listed and they 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 go from there and then there when you press the button it takes you to the page where all of your product would be listed um, and the price being listed. So we're going to do that really quick. What we're going to do is we're going to grab a um, this text tool and we're just going to click there and we're going to type in 3.50 and that means $3.50. Now remember you cannot change it as long as it is covered with a dot. So you click around it and now you can go back in and you can change it to a 24 and we can change the color of the text to a yellow and we can make it bold if we want to or not make it bold I think it looks better without it actually being bold and now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to stick it over here and we're going to bring this all the way out to the edges all the way out to the edges just like that and we're going to tell it we want it to be centered that way you know that it is in the center. Now if I take this and I press control and I bring it up here, I can bring it to the top and then use my directional arrow keys to go up and down if I wanted to. And then as long as it is in this function, I can, when I click on it, I can type in there, plain dog or I can put anything in there that I want to but as long as it's done like that I can actually go in I can change what it says I can change the size of it I can change the color of it I can make it red if I wanted to to just kind of decorate things up I can make it blue so that you can barely see it or I can make it uh, very light blue so that it kind of sticks out uh, in this particular sense this would be a larger identifier so if you had like hot dog hot dog hot dog hot dog you have four specific hot dogs and one of them was a, a plain dog one was a piled dog one was a, um, a a chili dog or whatever the case is even though this says chili dog and we've actually segregated them like this you could actually write that in for you could have all of these as hot dog hot dog hot dog and then explain at this top piece what exactly it was that you wanted those to be so that you could better define them. I personally think that this is probably one of the better systems. I really like the way that it turned out. Um, now if you do this, all of a sudden you notice, wow, look at this, look what just happened. Well, 
these two are overlapping each other. So how do I fix that? How do I make this better? Uh, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to the position. I believe it is in nope. It is in appearance. So I'm going to go to the appearance. I'm going to. This is a padding, and what this padding does is it segregates the amount of space. So I'm going to zero that one, and I'm going to zero that one. And what it does is, it, if you notice, it just put it all on one line. So if I go to this one, it's the external padding in points. So I can go to zero zero, and guess what? It just it's, it's uh, it fills it up. So chips, soups, salad, fry, coleslaw. We will take the coleslaw to zeros, and so we'll all fit in there, nice and neat, beautiful. And we will just grab this and move it over there. The soda pop, we will do the same thing. We'll zero those out. The iced tea, zero those out. So they better fit. And, and that's the whole point, is you want it to fit. Uh, um, but you want it to be on the button, and you don't want the print to be so small that you can't read it. So here we have it. So the we're going to click on this. Now, if you double-click it, it will allow you to change it. It'll have the little dots thing, and you can actually change it to whatever you want. And then control, drag it down. And obviously, the chili dog is our, our most expensive feature and we're going to double click that. We're going to press the delete button to get rid of it. The chili dog is a six dollar and fifty cent hot dog. So we can do, we can add prices to these um, so that your, cash, your cashiers have that price immediately available to them. Uh, so a customer is standing there and you, you have this on your system you, they say, well, how much is a hot dog? A hot dog is three fifty. How much is a chili dog? A chili dog is four fifty. How much is the Philly dog? Well, it's six fifty. So you can have all of that stuff listed right there. You don't have to have it listed there if you don't want to. Uh, many people don't put the prices out on the system, but when you have hundreds of, of products in your system, it is sometimes advantageous to go ahead and have the price listed there. Now, another thing that we would probably uh, do is to just copy and paste these basically um, by control and drag and change the price of all of these things and we can do that in our next video as we go through there one of the other things that we're going to need to add is we're going to click on this and we're going to to uh, take it up a little bit and we're going to double click it and we're going to change it to invoice And we don't want it to go to the launch page, so we're going to tell it right now to just do nothing. So what happens is, if you press your hot dog, you will the button, the color of the button will change, and let you know that you have pushed that button. And a cool thing is, we can change that too, just by going here. We can go to the appearance, and we can say, what happens when the button is normal? what happens when you hover over it or when the button is pressed. So when the button is pressed, you see that the color changes quite dramatically. Well, I think that it should change even more dramatically. And so I really want to see that that button is changed when I press it. And you can select, and the best thing to do is select them all and go into this uh, if the button is pressed. And this is what I want to do, is, is I want to change those. The problem is that this one is different, and so it's not going to want to recognize that system. So the best thing that you could do is you can either grab this box and move it out of the way, or you can correct it and make it all the same. Uh, I Currently, I'm just going to drag it out of the way for now because aligning it is pretty simple. And I'm going to grab all... Uh, God, I hate that when that happens. Sometimes it gets a bit crazy. 
Okay. I'm gonna grab all of these. And when it is pressed, I want them to be a gradient. And I want that gradient to be this very light color. And voila, there it is. Now, the actually want these to have none, no fill at all. This one to be no fill at all. This one to be no fill at all. Now, you can take these. If I took this, and you bring it over here, see how, it, how it, all the lines lined up, showing you that it's exactly in the right space? Now, you can take these if you want to. If, if you're never going to change the $3.50, if you're never going to change the price, you can uh, right-click and you can go to arrange and you can group the systems if you want to and then it will all become a single unit <coughs> that cannot be changed until you ungroup them but if you do that what happens is if you have it associated with a script then y it will disassociate itself with that script and then you will be finished and you will have to uh, reassociate it with the script so for now uh, we've basically showed you how to initiate your pages and, and how to start setting them up. And um, later on, we're going to build the inventory one. I think the inventory one is kind of a big deal. And what I will do while, while we are out, um, I will pre-populate some of these fields with prices uh, just so that um, we have them in place. You guys can do the same. Pick any price. I don't really care. Uh, I think we'll do the, the all of these center ones for two dollars and fifty cents and we will do the soda pop the iced tea and the juice at a dollar fifty so we'll go ahead and populate all of those fields and um, when we come back next time we we will show you how to do even more so until next time uh, I hope you enjoyed this I hope that it has been of some assistance to you Please let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You are other videos on YouTube, and you're more than welcome to contact us through uh, cleanairvapors.com uh, if you should have some private questions that you might want to ask or some questions other than related to this particular section of what we're doing. Uh, but I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. This is Tim Hay for Clean Air Vapors.